On March 7, 2023, Saturn goes from Aquarius into Pisces. And this is very different energy because Saturn is about building structures and Pisces tends to dissolve structures. What does this mean for you? That's what we're going to talk about. Hi everyone, I'm Donna Stillhorn, your Practical Astrologer, and today we are talking about Saturn. This uh, video is going to be in three parts. Um, the first part is going to be about Saturn in Aquarius. We still have a few weeks of that to do, and I'm going to tell you what I had predicted for Saturn in Aquarius and how I did. Uh, the second part is going to be Saturn in Pisces at the downside. And so we're going to be talking about what I see as the possible outcomes for Saturn in Pisces and how it may affect the world and places closer to home. Uh, the third part of this video is Saturn in Pisces, the upside. And so these are the things that Saturn in Pisces can offer us as individuals and what we can do to make our lives better. By the way, if you would like to know more about what Saturn is going to be doing in your chart, I do readings. The link is in the description. I also have some video courses out. Uh, the latest one is uh, on reading the tarot. So if you've ever thought about reading the tarot, either for your personal use or for professional uses, <laughs> or doing it professionally, um, the link is in the description. Let's look at Saturn and Aquarius and review some of my predictions for Saturn and Aquarius and see what did manifest and what did not. So I had said that Saturn and Aquarius would bring increased loneliness and feeling isolated from friends. And I did notice on YouTube there were actual videos on this, you know, people saying that they hadn't had a friend in years. Of course, Saturn in Aquarius, um, Aquarius being the group and Saturn being restriction, would isolate us. And during, of course, the whole pandemic, we were isolated, so this did make sense. Another thing I said that was that we might have a feeling of limited options in the future. Um, this, of course, also because of the pandemic, a lot of people did feel this. Uh, I did note that Consumer sentiment uh, at the start of March 2020, when Pluto went into Aquarius, was at 89, and currently it is at 64. That is for January 2023. So that is people's general feeling of optimism. I know that some of these surveys are pretty vague, uh, or we don't really know what the criteria is, but that was quite a drop. So, and that... That's Saturn and Aquarius. So I had said that airline travel would become more difficult and that an airline might go bankrupt. So I don't think an airline did go bankrupt. However, airline travel was definitely more difficult. Uh, some of it, again, due to the pandemic. Also, though, that um, in more recent times, Southwest Airlines had a big debacle in December 2022. And then there was an FAA system outage in 2023. And so this just added to some of the problems that have been over the last couple of years. So I had said there would be a computer chip shortage, uh, or that at least that, that would continue and that computers would become more expensive. Um, and then I noticed in October 2022 uh, that uh, the Biden administration clamped down on China's access to chip technology. And so that's kind of contributing to this shortage out there. Uh, there's been numerous news stories about this chip shortage. I said that there would be additional restrictions when accessing computer through verification methods. Now, I didn't really observe any breakthroughs in technology about this. Um, you know, there's still the two-factor two authentication. That's a tough word. Um, and I, I am noticing more where there's a QR code and an option to log in through your phone. So I think that they're trying different things, but no real technology took off uh, based on this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, mm, didn't quite get this one right. I said that one or more large uh, and important organizations would become discredited or have scandals. And of course, we had the FTX crypto scandal, uh, the Twitter slash Elon Musk um, stuff that was going on. So uh, those are the more recent ones. There were ones that were more in 2020 and 2021, but those were the recent ones. 
I said there would be more power outages and more vulnerabilities in the national electrical grids. Uh, and in recent times, there was the attack on the North Carolina uh, power grid. There was rolling blackouts in California uh, during this period of time. I think in general, we're going to see this because Saturn was really affecting the electrical grids. And so I think that that, that may still continue for some time. So I had said that there would be slow wage growth or cutting back on employee benefits. And what I found, though, was that many states lifted the minimum wage. So I did not get this one right. You know, um, that that one did surprise me because I had thought that there would be more of a restriction in this area. So but I'm happy to say that minimum wage did get lifted. So I had said that this would depress prices in technology stocks. And so just to note, Tesla stock started at 400 um, during when Saturn went into Aquarius. Now it's at uh, 122 a share. NASDAQ went from 10,000 to 16,000 and then dropped back down to 10,000 during Saturn and Aquarius. Now, I had also said there would be more jobs in the tech industry, thinking that Saturn and career melded with Aquarius and technology. Uh, but however, there was actually layoffs, lots of them in the tech industry, so I did not get this one correct. Okay, let's take a look at the downside of Saturn and Pisces, uh, and uh, we'll go through my predictions for that. If you want to skip this section and go right to the upside, uh, there is uh, some chapters and timestamps in the description. So Saturn in Pisces rules large companies, uh, corporations, large institutions. And so what I see is workers demanding more flexibility in schedules and the option to work at home, leading to a showdown with CEOs in the largest of the companies. I think that this won't be so prevalent in smaller companies. Maybe workers will have more more say in this, but in the big companies, I think there's going to be a showdown. When we have Saturn in Pisces, it will be unclear who's in charge. It's like the old leaders are passing away and the new leaders haven't yet arrived. So the old leaders that we've had, we don't want again, but we haven't picked anybody out of the crowd yet to rise to power. So I think that there's going to be a sense of not having clear leadership. Pisces rules the pharmaceutical industry, so this can mean problems and scandals within the pharmaceutical industry. So I think some of the larger companies could have scandals, even the smaller ones. And so we may discover a lot of things they've been doing behind the scenes. Pisces also rules uh, healthcare, especially hospitals and long-term care, uh, convalescence and, and uh, hospice. And so what I see is not enough workers in these industries uh, very long wait times, um, very, very difficult conditions uh, if you're having to go into hospital because there's just not enough nurses, doctors, or support staff. Saturn in Pisces will probably bring lots more drought, and then that would be followed by so much rain that the earth can't absorb it, so that would be flooding, and then more drought. And so, and especially in places already experiencing drought, like here in California, I think that this is quite possible. So it's like the rain doesn't help um, because it just comes down too fast, too quickly, or is coming down in a place that is not helping the places in drought. So I think drought is going to be a definite topic this time. I think that there may be a controversy in, within the Navy or in with about ships or submarines. Uh, all of this is very Pisces ruled and Saturn can bring controversy. So um, I think that there may be a problem or some big story that comes out. Maybe a ship is lost or a submarine is lost. So I think there's going to be stories about, you know, people and boats. Pisces also rules the ocean, so this might mean uh, a lot of rules about fishing, maybe uh, less fish in the ocean, concern about the trash problem in the ocean, um, maybe just 
worried about the ocean in general. So Saturn is about structure and Pisces dissolves structures. And so one of those structures could be borders. And so countries' borders may be a very big issue this time. And that might, it might give the impression that borders are being overrun, that borders are dissolving. And so there may be this idea that many, many people are, are going past borders, flooding in. Um, and this may or may not be true. It could be a perception of this, of this porous border. Uh, or it could be countries very orderly, you know, like looking at how we can bring people in more orderly. I think the probable immigration reform in the United States is not coming until 2025, 2026. Now, the, it's really interesting that one of the previous Saturn and Pisces periods was 1849 during the gold rush. And uh, so I think that we're going to get a new gold rush. And that is a lot of hype around AI and the companies that are associated with AI. I think people are going to rush to invest in these and they are going to get very excited about them. But this does have a potential crash for these types of companies in 2025, 2026. So, of course, if you're investing, do be careful. And then overall, Saturn in Pisces is about an emphasis of the victim, uh, like people identifying with being a victim or, uh, you know, victimhood in general. It may cause a leader to rise from ashes, you know, like somebody who was a victim becomes a leader. Um, but it also can mean that we are very focused on where we've been a victim or people who have been victimized in our lives. And so we need to make sure that we're not, you know, buying into that energy if that's you know, not the case, um, you know, if if there has been injustice that we are, you know, speaking up about it, but not not turning that energy inward to say, oh, I'm a victim and so therefore I'm powerless. So, but I do think that we're going to hear that word victim a lot during this uh, transit. All right, let's talk about Saturn and Pisces and the upside. These are the things that you can do personally to really maximize the positive parts of this energy. So the first thing is that you can establish a set of rules for yourself that allow you to thrive in a world of uncertainty. So Saturn is about rules. And of course, we already know the world is very uncertain. And so Saturn is looking for practical applications. So this might be, you know, having an emergency fund that so that you're not up nights worrying about making a bill or running out of money. This might be having extra supplies at home so that you don't have to rush out when, you know, the world's a little bit crazy. And I think that it's important to, you know, look at the new technologies that are coming and look at them with curiosity rather than thinking that, you know, AI is going to take over the world. Uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember when copy machines became really prevalent. In fact, there were whole companies uh, like Kinko's that were just just rooms full of copy machines where you could go in and copy whatever you wanted. And at the time, you know, so many people said, oh, this is the end of the book industry. You know, who's going to buy a book if you can just go in and copy it? And of course, that didn't happen. I mean, the same thing happened when tape recorders got really small and so that people could record things, um, you know, when... I mean, there's so many examples uh, we could go on and on with all of the different things. Uh, so new technologies do create a lot of change. It's true. I mean, there's no more blockbuster video, et cetera. And there's not that many buggy whip manufacturers, but the it does also create new jobs. And so it's just more important for us to think about what we can do in a practical way to uh, use the new technologies and or at least to embrace the new world that's coming about. So with Saturn in Pisces, there is uh, this energy of finding peace in the eye of the storm. And that is to recognize, first of all, that when the storm happens, it doesn't hit every place equally hard, or some places it doesn't hit at all. And so when we see on the news that terrible things are happening all over the world, we also have to be present and, and do that, that sort of stat Saturn stoic, 
you know, what's happening in my neighborhood, what's happening in my home, and to see that it's not happening everywhere all at once. And so that's part of it. It is also to recognize, though, that the storm brings an opportunity. Saturn is about hard work and gaining expertise. And so when the storm is happening, we're we're, we're getting to sail through it, and the result is we can become better sailors. And so that we, if we look at things and lean into the things that are coming and say, what can I learn about this? How can I get better at what I'm doing? Because those are the things that Saturn wants. Then we see a purpose in the things happening. Saturn in Pisces also brings the opportunity to find your higher purpose, um, your mission statement, your bigger why. So Pisces is about, about the, like, like how we interact with the universe. Like there's no boundaries between us and the cosmos. And then Saturn wants to have this purpose-driven life. And so now Saturn can pick from this range of things that is infinite. So what that means is that you can find something that you you love or you believe or or that you're striving for that is important, the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, the thing that drives you to do more than you thought you could do, that's the energy for Saturn in Pisces. So, and, and this is, you know, finding something that is bigger than yourself. And that, so that doesn't mean that you have to go out and build hospitals or rescue every animal, but maybe you rescue one or two. You know, maybe you donate some time or some energy to helping people who maybe need to go to the doctor, maybe they need a ride, maybe you're volunteering at the hospital. So it's finding something that is your personal mission. That's what can happen during Saturn in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces is also about looking at some of the practical things from a spiritual perspective. And so this is finding the, um, the balance between responsibilities or obligations and experiencing life. And so there was a great book a long time ago um, called Chop Wood, Carry Water. And it was very much about finding the joy in the everyday simple things in life. You know, um, I remember I was listening to Rachel Ray, the, um, the famous uh, home cook, who would, uh, you know, she was asked like, okay, so you cook all day on TV. What do you do when you get home? And she says, I cook for my family. And they were surprised to say, wow, you go home and cook? And she said, well, I think of cooking as relaxation with knives, you know? And so that really appealed to me. And so that that's the opportunity to look at what you're doing on an everyday basis and finding the joy in gardening or cleaning or... Uh, you know, just doing everyday tasks. Now, with Saturn in Pisces, I think that we're going to let go of things that we were seeing as status items because Saturn, will it wants recognition and it wants status. In Pisces, it does. it's more part of the sea of humanity. And so we may be letting go of designer labels or feeling like we have to keep up with the Joneses. And so I think that this could be very good. Um, I think that there will be this uh, interest in quality over quantity as well. And so it won't need, it won't seem to uh, be as important to have the latest tennis shoes if you find already the tennis shoes you have are comfortable and get you from point A to point B. So Pisces is the last of the 12 signs, and so it does represent an ending of sorts. And so with Saturn in Pisces, we may be looking at what projects need to be completed during this time, maybe projects that we started years ago. We also may look at projects that we just don't want to complete and let go of those projects. And this is a time to look at whether you should cut your losses. You know, sometimes we feel like we have invested so much time and energy in there that we stay with something even though it has a really diminishing uh, percentage of, of or potential of success. So this is a time where we want to look at the price that we've paid for things uh, and say, you know what, I, I paid this amount of money, I've kept this item in my closet, but I'm never wearing it, so I'm just going to 
let it go. Because otherwise, we look at those things in our closet and we see them as mistakes. And that can really bring us down. It's a, the same with investments or anything you've put a lot of time and energy into. So with all the things in your life, it, it's a time to look at the projects that you have and say, is it time to finish this? Uh, is, it, is it good enough as it is? Or is it time to just cut your losses and let it go? Now, with Saturn and Pisces, we have kind of a conflict because Saturn rules calendars and time, and Pisces rules a complete lack of time. And so I think what this means is that we're going to be letting go of a lot of time constraints over ourselves, or we have the option to, I should say. We can um, learn to use a calendar without actually having it run our lives. And so we may be more aware of when we have leisure time, how much time we're spending at work, if we're spending a lot of overtime, and finding a way to budget our time so that we still have the sense of freedom. So I think that this is going to be a, a big talking point for people during this transit. So Saturn rules guilt, and Pisces can rule this area of the shadow self where we feel like we've done something wrong, that we need to atone for that. And so there is going to be quite a bit of emphasis on this during this transit. And that is that we can look at what we feel guilty about and assess whether it's true or not. I mean, was this a responsibility that you had that you you didn't follow through on? Or was it actually somebody else's responsibility, but you were just taking on that energy? And so figuring that out, if it was something that you are legitimately feeling guilty about, what are the ways you can atone? Is that, do you need to apologize to the person? Do you need to, uh, you know, forgive yourself? Do you need to maybe go do some sort of community service? So there's going to be a lot of emphasis on guilt and trying to make amends. Now, Saturn in Pisces is a bit isolating, so... You know, they, there could be many reasons that we're isolated. I think the most, the biggest one is that the world seems to be a very uncertain place right now. And, uh, you know, after pandemic and shootings and all kinds of things, we just want to withdraw. This, especially in 2022, when we're doing the year of the water rabbit, I think we're going to be spending a lot of time on our own. But the interesting thing with Saturn and Pisces is a, I think there's an opportunity to feel more comfortable spending time by yourself. And, and then finally, uh, Saturn is about lessons and, you know, gaining expertise and Pisces is the bigger universe. Uh, it is that spiritual connection we have to all things. And so this is an opportunity to co-create in a very practical way with the universe. So I think that there is this idea sometimes that, you know, that we've done something good and so we should be rewarded, but the universe doesn't really work that way. It is more that these lessons are things that help us. And so if we can look at the challenges in our life as something that's going to make us stronger, that really makes Saturn very happy. And so I think that we're going to have more ability to co-create with the universe with Saturn and Pisces. And if we can embrace the lessons, we are going to feel more successful in general general, more peaceful, and will be in the flow. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned because Luru wants to say hi.